I made a tutorial on how to make a gum paste bowl. And I wanted to refresh the whole tutorial and add a few more details to it. If you like this type of tutorial, feel free to subscribe to my channel. First thing I do is do some rolls with wax paper. You can also use parchment paper, but I like more the wax paper. I just fold the paper a few times and then I roll it. I like to make these rolls because I can control how thick my bowl will be and also I can reuse them over and over again. Once roll, I just put a tape and it holds. We are making a very basic bowl and we will only need two of these rolls. Now that you have your rolls made, you want to work with your fondant or gum paste. If you're using gum paste, it'll be perfect. If you're using fondant, I would suggest to add a bit of Tylos to it. I just posted a video on how to work with fondant and Tylos. I will post a link in the comment box below and also I will post the link to the blog. After you knead your fondant or gum paste really well, you want to roll it. I don't like a thick bowl because if you do it too thick, it'll actually make everything heavy and it can fall down easily. You can roll it as thin as you can handle it, but if you want to start on a thicker side, I would suggest a size number two in your pasta machine. You can see in here is a nice middle ground, it's not too thick or not too thin. But once you get used to if you want to go thinner, you can. Roll your fondant or gum paste to an estimated amount of 10 inches in length to around 2.5 inches wide. It doesn't matter if it's bigger than that as long as you have the measure. I am using a Wilton cutter to cut this bow and the measurement for the center is 2 inches wide. You can use a knife or any other tool you like, but you will have to measure and make sure it's even on both sides. You want to always make sure that your edges are clean, so I always pass my finger around the edge to clean them. I fold this in half and find the center of it. After I do that, I can put some glue in the center and just gather it. After I'm done with the center, I add some glue on each corner of my bow. As you can see, I have a 9 inch length for this bow. But keep in mind this is an estimate. You can change this as you work with it. Gather each side of the gum paste. Take one of the wax rolls and place it in the center and fold it. At this point, if you want your bow to be shorter, you can cut it manually. It really depends on how big you want your bow to be. Add some glue in the center and press it down. Be gentle and do not overpress, but do make sure it's glued together. Then take the other roll and do the other side. As you can see once again, I want to make it shorter, so I cut it manually. Put some glue and attach. This is usually the back of my bow so I tend to flip it to the front and make sure that everything looks fine. I take a piece of the fondant left over from what I used earlier and just roll it a little bit thinner. You can see how thin it is here. Cut this piece around one and a half inches in thickness. The length really doesn't matter as long as it's enough to go around the bowl. Fold the edges toward the inside. Around one quarter of an inch should be enough. Seams go under so flip the piece and you're going to be working on the top. Use a skewer to mark a pleat in the center of this part of the bowl. Take the skewer out and gather one side, cut the excess, and make sure it fits around your bowl.
the rough estimate is around two and a half inches in length. This might change depending on the size of your bowl. Add some glue in each corner of the piece and just wrap it around the bowl. Make sure not to crush the center, but if you do it a little bit, you can still fix it after it's glued, so don't worry about it. Do make sure it's glued together well at the back. You can remark the center with your Dresden tool and use your fingers to push it towards the center. Be gentle when you do this, you don't want to mess your edges. Now that your bow is ready and you can let it dry for a little bit, we can work with the tails. Same rule goes with this, you need your fondant and then you roll it. Once again, you can see how thin the fondant is. I cut this piece again with my Wilton tool, it's just very easy to use. My rule when it comes to the tails is that you don't really have a length for them, you can play with it. Tails comes in different lengths. Since my piece is long enough, I'm going to cut it in half. But let's say we're doing them 4 inches in length, which is the typical height of a cake. You can go from there and then cut them short, or if you decide a taller cake, you can cut them longer. That is your option. The tails of a bow are cut different ways, so choose the tail style that you like. Usually I cut my part straight, but I did this on purpose because I want you guys to see that even if the top is not perfectly straight, it's gonna be hidden by the gathering of it. So if you don't have a lot of fondant or gum paste, don't bother too much by it. As soon as you gather it, this will be completely gone and you won't see it wasn't straight. Another thing I did on purpose was cutting the leg the same size of the bow. This is something I usually never do because when I put it with the bow, it just looks really big. And I personally don't love it. So what I do is I cut my leg a little bit smaller, like a quarter of an inch smaller than the size of the width of my bow. Once you have done that, you can put some glue at the top and gather the top. But before I cut the second leg, just check the difference on how it looks with the leg cut smaller and the other wider. This would be your option. If you like them wider, just leave them the same size. I usually cut them smaller. Once you do that, gather them and make sure that both legs are the same length. They can be uneven if that's what you're looking for or you can clip them at the top with your fingers and be done with it. This is the other style you can cut your tails. I'm not putting glue because I want to show you different styles or different ways you can put the bow in the cake. Typically you put your tails first. And this will change depending on what you're trying to do. As you can see, my bow is still soft so I can mold it around my cake. Usually a bow that goes on top of a tear or on top of the board holds really well because it had something below holding it. So those are pretty easy to attach. You can also play with the shape of your tails. In this case, I'm giving them a little bit of movement if you need this to hold stronger, you can let this dry a little bit before placing on the cake and dry them on top of foam. Once you place your tails, you want to place the bow. And you want to make sure that the center of the bow and the tails meet. This is how the finished bow should look like. And remember, I am not using glue, so the glue would help you hold everything in place. I'm not doing this right now because I want to show you other ways you can place the bow on a cake. I will do a more advanced tutorial on how to play with bows and other styles of bows. When I put them at the top of the cake, I usually put a skewer through the center so it holds well. Now the most asked question is what do I do when I put it on the center of a cake? There's nothing holding the bow. I usually put glue on each side, on each loop, where my fingers are, then in the center, and I place a skewer 
through the center of the bowl, either one skewer or two. It depends how big is your bowl. Just play with it and learn what you like best. As you can see, I've been moving around the bowl from side to side on this cake and it's still holding pretty strongly. So just know that you can actually work with a bowl that is not completely dry and it will hold strongly. And always keep in mind that if you hang the bowl from the side or even the top, you can use a toothpick in the center and hide it really well and nobody will notice it's there. And when you're making your center, always remember how bowls are made. Bowls are usually made of one long piece of ribbon or fabric. So make sure when you build them, the center meets all together and it looks like one piece. I hope you enjoyed the remake of this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, visit me on Facebook, share your work with me, visit me on Instagram, and don't forget to visit my blog. Until next time, ta-ta!